these things tied to your identity ties into what is your purpose and why are you here, right? My job here is to make sure that God is glorified. Unfortunately, some people think that the world revolves around them. So I was created so that I can have a nice life. I can have like my comfortable house with my nice car, with my wife and kids, and then they grow up and I marry them off and then I am successful and then as long. So they're living in this little bubble where like their life is all about them. Unfortunately, like not unfortunately, but it would be nice if we would come to the quick realization that life here is not about us. It's not about us. St. Paul says, for of him and through him and to him are all things. All things. So that means everything that exists, exists because he created it. Everything survives because he permits it. And at the end, everything is coming back to him. So it would be almost kind of silly to believe that me, coming here in the 21st century, that I'm just going to like live my own life, and I, I think that I, my life is its own little puzzle independent of everyone else. Yet, I don't realize that God, who decided to create me at this specific moment in time, is using me, or wants to use me, as this little mosaic tile, uh, tile in a huge, huge painting. The little tile, like you guys know mosaic, so like a little, a picture made of little like blocks, like a billion of them, right? So if, imagine if the little tile decides to be like, you know what, I don't want to sit here because like it's really uncomfortable. I don't want to sit in this corner because like the sun doesn't shine on it and, and all of a sudden like the tile thinks like it knows, like it thinks like it understands the vision. But the artist, He's like, no, Habib, you don't understand. You need to be exactly there. Because it's not about like you. You are not the painting. This is the painting. And the painting didn't start with you. And it didn't start with this guy. And it didn't start with this guy. It started with me. God is the one who wanted to create a painting. And he created each individual tile. And he wants to place these tiles in specific parts. So that at the end he has an amazing picture. So the quicker we realize that life is not about us and it's not about our own little self-centeredness, well then the quickly we run to try to put on Christ and to have Him as be my identity. The tile can decide to identify itself with marble or whatever material it is or it can decide to identify itself by the creator of it who took the time to cut it out and to paint the little design that's on it and decide to make it part of the huge canvas. Why is it that we stress on spending time with God at night or in the morning or whatever, spending quiet time? Why do we make such a big deal about this? Because the time that you spend with Christ, it's time that you spend putting Him on. This is, this is what it comes down to. It's I'm, I'm, I come before Christ at whatever time that I decide to spend alone with him and I tell him listen I'm here because I want to put you on and I'm having some trouble because canceling stuff that I want and trying to get out of my little tile and understanding that there's a bigger vision it's hard for me it's hard for me to not be so focused on my little tile and where my tile is and how uncomfortable or comfortable the position the tile is in we spend this time with Christ that we may put Him on and that He becomes our identity. So that when people look at us, they don't see us. It's about Him. Yeah, but I'm missing out going out with my friends at the club. Who cares? It's not about you. It's about Him. People need to see Him. And it's our responsibility to make sure that the world sees Him. One of the church fathers says, you may be the only Bible people will ever read. That's true. You actually may be the only Bible that people have ever read. St. Augustine says, Preach the gospel at all times. Use words if necessary. It's not, it's not by standing up and speaking about Christ. It's the testimony of your lives that makes a difference in people. 
People who see Christ in you will approach you and they will ask questions and they'll be, what is this that's going on? We have never seen people like this. Unfortunately, if the world today is not going and asking Christians, what is it that you guys are doing and how come you're living this way? It's because we're living all together way too close to the way the rest of the world is living. And that's a serious problem. If we are not standing out, it means that the difference between us who are supposed to have the lens of eternity and the identity of Christ, we're living as those who have the lens of themselves and are living for themselves. If they don't spot a difference. Uh, <clears throat> if someone chooses not to be a part of uh, the painting, uh, so God uh, failed to do the painting, or like He will bring someone else to replace? Like the first thing that's important to know is that God is in need of no man. God is in need of no one. Right? The liturgy of St. Gregory says, it is not you who, need it, who needs my servitude, but rather I am the one who needs your lordship. So God, it's, he's like, I am the one in need of God, God is not the one in need of me. So if I decide to not be in his painting, well then, it's my loss. I don't want to say that God will replace me because, like I said, you are unique of your own. And this is kind of the two things like that's kind of tough to reconcile is that like no God is not going to be lacking anything because you decided not to be in his painting but at the same time no you are not replaceable because you are the only one you are the only like Mina in the world like sit well no you're not but like, <laughs> <laughs> like you are by far not the only Mina in the world <laughs> like you understand what I mean you're the only like Mina and Sina, like in the world we have there's, there's never going to be another one like you. So no, you are not replaceable. But at the same time, God will not suffer lack. You understand? So that at the end, it becomes my loss, it's not his loss. You understand what I mean? The point, yes. This guy's a saint. I don't know him. I haven't talked to him. I just want to like kiss his feet. But like I know he's a saint. Because it, Christ will inevitably show on you. Like, Abuna Arsenio's got to rest his soul. Like, you sensed Christ in his walk. Like, all he had to do is walk. And you felt like, like Christ is walking right next to him. Time, that time that you spend alone with Christ. Like I said, this is time that you're spending putting on Christ. And this is, it's almost like, it's almost like Christ puts you in front of a mirror in that time. And then he says, you see, Habibi, there's a little spot here. Okay, let's get rid of this spot. And you have a little spot here, let's get rid of this spot. So then when you go out to the world, it shows. I'm telling you that the time that you spend with Christ alone, you're not going to have to do any conscious effort. Like, you're not going to be like, ooh. Okay, so how, what would be the most Christian thing to do right now in school? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not going to work like that. But when you have a relationship with Christ, it automatically shows. And it'll show in your decisions. And it'll show in your behaviors. Listen, if, my, if, at, if at work, if at work, if Christ occupies a serious part in my life, 
Well, then people will know not by preaching, but it just comes natural. Like, think, each one think of like your close entourage in like school or work or whatever. Like, if you know a guy who likes to go hunting and fishing, for example, like he didn't need to preach to you that he likes hunting or fishing. But because it's so important in his life, well then, in the course of, of normal conversations, like, hey, what did you do last weekend? It's like, okay, well, I went hunting and I went fishing. And then asking him this question three, four times, and then he keeps answering the same answer. And then when you tell him, hey, what are you doing this summer vacation? He's like, oh, yeah, I'm taking a road trip to like up north and we're going to go fishing, whatever. Well then, without him necessarily saying that I love fishing, well, you figured it out. Because it's just so naturally in his life. If Christ is so naturally a big part of my life, well then it's just a matter of time he comes up in a conversation when people are just simply asking me about what I'm doing. And it's not going to be like, like uh, conscious, like I need to preach to you right now because you asked me about like what I did on the weekend. Like that's not it. But I'm like, hey, what did you do on the weekend? Oh yeah, well I went to church on Sunday, you know what? Khalas, like it already came up. Oh, aren't you hitting, uh, like, I don't know what on Wednesday? Oh, you know, like, I'm fasting. Oh, okay, are well, you fasting? What does that mean? Okay, are you Muslim? No, okay. <laughs> so, people, so people get to know you, like, like right away. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily require, um, it doesn't require, like, a formal setting of preaching. What it does require is that Christ occupied a, a place in your heart. And not just a small place. And we want to put on Christ. So He occupies the heart. Like when you sit in front of Christ, it's God, I don't want just for you to like be like my friend. Then I want you to take me over from top to bottom. I want you to control every single thought. Like Colin was saying, to bring every thought into captivity under Christ. That's it. It means every thought, I need it to pass by Christ before it passes by me. Every breath has to have Christ in the breath. This is, if I'm sincerely looking for this, and I spend time asking God for this, don't worry about it, live your life and you'll see. You'll see how bad, how much it's going to show. But the question that we each need to ask ourselves tonight, and this is what I want to leave you guys with because I'm ready over time. And my phone man, that's fantastic. Who are we? <coughs> and like get past the, I'm a Christian. Seriously, who am I? And at what expense am I willing to put on Christ and to get rid of my own wants and desires? At what ex at, to what extent am I willing to get out of my comfort zone to, so that Christ can be put on me and so that He lives through me? So that I come to the point where I can say with St. Paul, it is not I who live, but Christ who lives through me. Do you guys get the picture? Like... St. Paul, when he talks about like Christ and his relationship with Christ, this is just, it's not just like his God from far. It's not even his friend from near. This is someone who's inside him and he's inside him. So then it doesn't become of like, it doesn't become like, oh, well, is it wrong to go to this place or not? It's no. It's like, I have put on Christ. Can I, can Christ comfortably walk in here and sit? Yes or no? Can Christ comfortably go to this place? Or can Christ comfortably say this? Or can Christ comfortably... This is, this is what it means to put on Christ. Like, yeah, very cheesy back in a couple of years ago, you know, what would Jesus do? But I mean, this is the essence of our lives. It's not just what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? What would Jesus say? What would Jesus act? How much would Jesus sleep? Like, all of these questions, like, they, it determines, like, our entire life. But if it's not then we need to revise ourselves. Questions? Comments? Hopefully this was a topic you guys have in mind.
love for Christ was and like how amazing he was as a student. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and like I said, people when they sense your relationship with Christ, like I know maybe there's like a war on faith, but actually, at least with my experience at work, people actually have great respect for people of faith. <coughs> they actually have like a high respect for them. And they said, you know what, I wish I believed in, in something. And actually, and I, I said this once in like service meeting, but even in our community, like we don't just, like yeah, we have respect for like the elder, you know, culturally, and we have respect for like the priest, and you know what he, just, just for the sake of like the Gedebe, we have respect for the Gedebe, we have respect for the bishop, we have respect for the Pope, but also, if you notice, we actually have respect for people who have a relationship with Christ. Because we sense it. And because we sense it, therefore, it, in and of itself, it demands respect. Like, I can think of several people that are not priests, but that I, I hold to the same level of respect. Because we respect the relationship with Christ. Someone who you know has a strong relationship with Christ, all of a sudden his opinion starts to matter, what he says starts to matter, everything starts to matter about this person because you believe that he has put on Christ. So, yes, the world persecutes the Christians and doesn't like the Christians, but actually, there is also a huge part that gains, that demands respect because of the person who's in front of you. Did you want to say else? What's the point of what way did you say that? Sorry? What was your point when you said that the last thing you said about um, that if we live as a Christian that we gain respect? I'm just saying, like, even in people's dealing with us, it'll show that you have a relationship with Christ. My light shining. <coughs> you have a light shining that love makes us you stand out more than others. Anything else? Yeah, I really like the mosaic the examples from what you gave the food. I feel like I guess the way that it ties into this series of the deception is that in uh, Satan wants us to see ourselves as this one piece separate from the big picture and wants us to uh, take glory in our own piece, like, oh, like, you know, you're going to be like the best piece, you're going to be, you know, best material, best color, best whatever. Uh, and But as long, if we're apart from the picture or if we're not in the spot where God wants us to be, then we really have not much worth, like, there's not much worth in the one piece, you know, the piece has its worth as it's placed by God, the artist, you know. So the deception is to keep on being self-centered, like Mark said, and like, you know, how, how to be all about me, but the truth is that like when we are in Christ, I mean, that's where we have our value, and that's where we feel the abundant life, we live the abundant life, and, and it, all, it all makes sense in the grand scheme of things and on the scale of eternity. Uh, like, so remember the verse, like, what profit is it if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul in that sense?